You are now listening to the Low Bat Podcast, a weekly show highlighting members of our local creative community and featuring topical conversations with members of the Low Bat production team. We're your hosts, Casey House and Fabian Castaneda. Through our own experiences as musicians, visual artists, and business owners, we saw an opportunity to provide a platform for people just like us to deep dive into what it's like to pursue a lifestyle outside of the norm. Without further ado, welcome to the Low Bat Podcast. <laughs> Fired. All of you, a lot of you are fired. <laughs> can, I pull, can I pull this? You're already there. You're all, you're all fired. Oh, this is rough. Okay. Well, welcome everybody to the Lobat Podcast. We have a special episode. Um, we're going to be doing a spooky episode because it's the best month ever. It's October. Uh, so, of course, we had to do something spooky. Christmas is better. That's disrespectful and also wrong. October uh, is the best. I do agree. Yeah, thank you. Fall air is getting there. Spooky things, ghosts, pumpkins. Outside. I want to be haunted. November is pretty cool too. Eh, uh, Thanksgiving is over. Whatever. But uh, so this we music will never stop. Yeah. It's gonna play. Th- oh, and, and as, oh, as soon as I said purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we wanted to keep it spooky, but also keep it local in the theme of the podcast, obviously. Um, so we're going to be talking about the history of witchcraft, specifically in Virginia, and then dive a little bit deeper into one specific case. And if you're a local, I'm sure you've heard of her. Uh, her name is Grace Sherwood or the Witch of Pungo. You guys have ever heard of her before? No, I haven't. Tyler, I guess you heard of her. Sounds vaguely familiar, but okay. I can't remember. That's fair. And after, at the end of this episode, you're going to be like, oh, shit, I didn't read oh, I'm, I'm excited to like learn. Have about you heard of, of Witch Duck the Road before? Yeah. That's there you go. It's the Witch of Pungo. So, like, is, is was, the, was, was there, she a duck? Was there a haunted duck? Yeah, that's yeah, what it's I'm a like. haunted duck. So let's get into that, shall we? <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to, to be a real question. You have to stay to the end <laughs> to find out if she was a haunted duck. I also uh, briefly want to. There's a fuzzy falling. Uh, I want to call out uh, the fact that um, Tyler changed his outfit to try to make it seem like we didn't just Why record another episode. Would you do that? But because I, I think it's Remember, way I will funny. point out real quick though. But Tyler looks the dopest out of all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's on theme. You. This is low key my favorite. This is what like, I wear over. anyway, so you I don't have to look change. like you're gonna rob me. I do have black pants on as well. So. And black socks. Well, yeah. Why would I wear? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I had a phase where I wanted to have like interesting socks, and then I realized it's too much that work. It's, it's a lot of work, and they're expensive. Not that that's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. So uh, the real take it away, man. Capitalism that, like, all along. Yeah, there you go. Into podcast roll credits. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so before we get started on, table. on Grace Sherwood, I think it's important to talk about the witchcraft in Virginia in general, just to put a s- perspective on um, what was going on at that time. Um, so I'm sure you guys are familiar with witchcraft in some point of some expectants, right? Shout outs to the witch trials. We that yep that happened. Also shout outs to uh, Halloween Town, uh, the movie Twitches. Yep. Um, Halloween Town one, two, and three, but not four. Okay. They changed the actress. Yeah, they did. Four. That was really weird. I remember being a child and like, what the fuck is this? But then, oh, I, yeah, that shit know. scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Yeah. The first one, I, that movie terrified me. I was kind of a baby though. Courage. I see you looking at me. Courage the Cowardly Dog also freaked me That's out. That's my favorite show. So I was I was kind of a baby, honestly. Uh, things scared me. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this might also scare you then too. So witchcraft yeah, yeah. in general, uh, the existence of witches and demonic forces, witchcraft also, right, uh, was considered the work of the devil back in the day. Um, and when long many moons ago, when colonizers came over and colonists settled here in Virginia specifically, um, they believed that witches could be easily identified um, mostly by their strange behavior and really just by how they looked, which is like, that's OG bullying. We love that. Um, so <laughs> here you go. I suppressed it. Here you go. So um, if you're, you guys are Virginia natives, I'm sure you're all he- you've heard of Jones. I'm not from here. Yeah, and neither am I actually. I don't think you are either. Okay. So we're not, are you are. Okay. Well, fuck me then. I, so I, I, I am. Oh, am I the only, okay. I'm from are North Carolina. Not? No, I'm from North Carolina. Oh, <laughs> I know it's a little Same bit. Same thing. I know, I know. So, but we're, we're all familiar of Jamestown, right? Yeah. They, they came, they colonized, they took over, they did not good things. Um, so, as early as nine or sixteen twenty six, which is only nineteen years after um, Jamestown colony was formed, um, a grand jury in Virginia sat down <laughs> and they considered whether Virginia resident Joan Wright was a witch. Um, and this was actually some of the transcription from her trial when i was looking through this like court paperwork first of all it's all gibberish we love that um but then second there's just like pages and pages and pages of this court transcription which i think is amazing is it actually gibberish or is it um, just written in a 
No, no, it's just written. Uh, it's it's very like ye old, ye old. They called her the um, the good wife. That was her her normal name. So her name was good wife John Wright, which Joan Wright, excuse me. Um, so yeah, they refer to her a lot as good wife, but her name is Joan Wright. Um, and they accused her of being a witch. And she had supposedly predicted the deaths of three other women in her town. And um, they thought that she had caused illness uh, upon these women for not hiring her as a midwife. Uh, so the town was like, wow, these women died and you think you knew about it? Um, most likely because she had some some knowledge about medicine um, and about treating. And was like, these women are probably going to fucking die. They're not doing great. Um, so they thought she was a witch. It's also important to note that Joan was left-handed so they oh, noted fuck. in her trial yep. that this made her untrustworthy witch. Can't to have the that residents. sinister hand bro yes so she was um one of the first noted witch cases in virginia um and just All like because I, she wanted to wash her hands oh she well. wanted to wash her hands and she had a left hand that worked well so like fuck her i guess so that's important to know what if you're um, ambidextrous i feel like that's like then you're like a super witch yeah you're like you're a god you like, yeah like, you know what you can no, you're roam the free. devil <laughs> you're, you're the, the devil yeah. Um, yeah, so poor, poor Joan Wright. She wasn't executed though. Um, she was found guilty though. And yeah, she was, she was convicted of being a witch. Um, I have a question about this. Yeah. I don't know how, like, how forthcoming they are, like in their, in their reasoning. Mm -hmm. Like, do they ever, was that really just it? Was it just like the left hand? Yeah. And, like, so I do talk about that a little bit later. Um, it actually, and just, so hold your thought for just one second. Okay. A lot of it is stems from religious belief. Um, so they think that anything that wasn't basically particularly written about in the Bible was ungodly. Um, therefore, you were a part of the devil um, and also just lack of knowledge in general. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so regardless of this one specific incident, 19 years after Jamestown, um, I almost said Jonestown. That's a different tragedy. <laughs> oh, my God. After Jamestown uh, settled here, uh, Virginia didn't experience the mass hysteria events that other places did. Uh, you, you mentioned the witch trials earlier. So Salem, Massachusetts. Um, yeah. Wow. Look at them. The ladies in Salem witch trials. Casey, are you familiar with the Salem witch trials at all? If not, it's okay. Not really. Yeah, no. that's fair. I was going to say there's a lot of misinformation about them. So basically. It was weird, as you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know. Um, so basically, witch trials took place in Salem, Massachusetts, um, in New England up north between 1692 and 1693. And in total, about 20 women were murdered uh, because they thought the, the colonies came together and thought they were fucking Wait, witches. it was only one year? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. I've it always... wasn't a long time. I, I think at most, there was probably like... Um, like a year, but yeah, go, you don't have to raise your hand. What is this? You know, let him ask a question when my hand was raised. Uh, okay, first of all. You, <laughs> you, so go ahead, say it. You bitch. Okay. <laughs> I kind of forget my, no, I remember actually. Oh, uh, uh, the, uh, is this when uh, uh, like they would throw a woman into the, into like water? Yeah, and be like, that can is they, called. If they can swim, they're a witch. Yeah. And if they die, then they die anyway. That's called ducking. Okay. Witch ducking. I did know about that. Did that so, just blow your yo. mind, Tyler? Yeah, it's called the witch ducking. That's what that is called. Um, Wait. Like the road. Uh, witch ducking. Witch duck. Road? Anybody? Okay. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah. So actually, this Ugh. is a photo illustrating uh, some of the women in the witch trials. Uh, so they, they killed them in a, a, a bunch of different ways. They hung them. Um, they did witch ducking. Um, they sometimes I read a report where they would like rip their limbs off. It was like very, it was very, very traumatic. I feel like for they anybody who's in people too. Fuck. Yeah. They I feel were like for anybody who's in the, uh, in, in this community yeah. that, that like really knows about this yeah. stuff and loves it and like is going to love you and hate at least hate me. Probably no, hate Tyler and No, I. it's not your fault you don't know about it. It's like, I mean, you know, it's very, it's a very New England thing that happened. And, um, yeah. And we'll talk about oh, okay. that actually right now. So in the North, um, like I said coming earlier. Up next. <laughs> coming up next. Coming up next. So in the North, most witchcraft uh, accusations come from, came from a religious standpoint, like I said. So it was very, from the Bible, um, they were Puritans. So um, once they came over from... Um, elsewhere, they're very hands like into their religion. Obviously, they always kind of were. <laughs> it's the 1600s. Um, but in Virginia, people's fear of witchcraft came from a combination of religion and folklore. Um, so not only was it just from a religious point of view of like, oh, you're you know you're from the devil, you were touched by the devil, but it was also thank you, Casey, for handing me my phone. Dropped this. I threw it on the ground. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> 
Um, so their fear of witchcraft came from folklore and also from religion. And that makes sense um, because up north, Puritans had settled in towns, so they were in bigger communities. Uh, so these communities put a lot of pressure on each other. Like once they thought anyone, they su like suspected of anyone of doing anything wrong, um, they were like, that's a witch. And they, they had a lot of peer pressure. So it was much easier for them to be like, fuck that witch, we're gonna kill her. Um, and that community also fostered that really, really strong religious backbone that they had. Uh, where when they came to Virginia and they settled in Virginia, um, specifically Southern Virginia folks were living in more rural areas. So they weren't as close together. So if your neighbor, like Jim Bob was doing some crazy shit, um, you wouldn't know you because wouldn't you're know. like 30 miles away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so they're sc scattered over much larger areas. So it was a lot harder for you to be like, I think Jim Bob is a witch. Um, but sorry, my hair is just, you know, doing a thing. Uh, but Virginia's laymen, so like the community members and <laughs> religious leaders, uh, weren't particularly interested in witchcraft as like prosecuting people with witchcraft. They are more interested in super important things like fornication, uh, slander, and gossip. So they would like put people on trial for having sex out of wedlock rather than being, um, um, which so because they thought that gossip slander and fornication were it's real small dick energy but it is it is unfortunately um they saw them as threats to social stability so if you're yep. having sex out of wedlock they're like bro you gotta go you're of the devil um so uh, yeah um and if we want to pull up our image c over there tell me you get no bitches without saying you get so look no at this bitches. guy this guy looks like a little bitch right we're gonna talk look about at that him. stash i mean he kind of looks swaggy in here but he's not okay so virginia <laughs> but he's not. he's not virginia required proof of guilt if you were to be accused as a witch um so one of the ways they did this was through finding the witch's mark on you um or ducking which we'll talk about later so um Witches' marks were thought to be where the devil touched you at, but often they were just simply birthmarks. So <laughs> it was if, um, you know, if I have a mole on my arm, it's like that the devil touched you there. That the, it's it was like reading the accusations of some of the, the women were absolutely insane. So this guy here is Matthew Hopkins, and he was a self-proclaimed witch hunter. And in the 17th century, he described one specific case. I know Tyler's laughing so hard right now. He was a self-proclaimed witch, witch hunter. Um, he described a case where he caught a witch who had three nipples <laughs> and said that the woman must have been using that third nipple to feed the devil. What the fuck? And in reality, she just had a birth defect, yeah. which required her, which just had three nipples. Um, so yeah, he wrote an entire book um, and he he captured all of these women and wrote about uh, those very fun captures in his book. So every, shout out Matthew Hopkins. Um, and all the pictures of him, they made him look short. So we love we love short king energy, just not not when you're a witch hunter no, no, and on. killing women for their In body this Now, shout outs to all the to, to all the short homies. We love out them. There. However, when you're doing dumb shit like yeah. this, it's officially being small body, and I can't yeah, I can't we support can't do small that. body shit. You can't nah, also bro. make fun of my like a third nipple, but then also like I can body slam you to the ground. Those two things don't go together. So just pick one or the other. You know what I'm saying? So. Shout out. He's, he's like rolling his eyes to you. Matthew Hopkins, ladies and gentlemen. He is um, rolling his eyes. Yeah. His right. hair is also uneven. Get a get a good haircut, get a dog. Rip, man. So like I said earlier, um, the Salem, Massachusetts had a lot more witch trials in general, um, a lot more deaths in general. Um, so although very few Virginia records actually survived from that era, we can confirm um, at minimum, there was 19 witchcraft court cases that took place in Virginia. And at the maximum, they think around 33 to 35. So anywhere between like 20 and 30. Um, Did any of the recorded ones not end in them being guilty and... Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. So actually, it's funny you say that because out of all the cases in Virginia, only one person was actually found guilty. Whoa. Um, well, there's one guilty conviction because <laughs> i guess a lot of the practices ended in them dying anyways so. yeah a lot well. of deaths or a lot of a lot of times they were just kind of like we don't know that's crazy <laughs> so then they just like just they're like, like shit, oh, I'm, gonna go back, know. I'm just gonna go back to my farm now yeah right, they're later. like shit i don't know what we should do or a lot of times there's this one case um is actually we'll talk about it in in the mm -hmm. second but yeah there there are uh there's only one actual guilty conviction and it was in 1656 and it was a case um it was actually a man that they had convicted of sorcery a uh, witchcraft um Ooh, a and warlock I, a fucking sick warlock and they didn't say what he did in order to be like who like why he was accused of witchcraft um they just they cited dark sorcery so that could literally mean anything um 
And his sentence, he was found guilty. He was sentenced to 13 whippings. And then he was banished from the county. They kicked him out of his own county, um, which I loved that, the audacity to, like, beat me up. And then you're like, get the fuck out of my town. I have a weirdly specific question. I don't know if I'll have a weirdly specific answer. Um, 13 whippings. Does that mean you got whipped 13 times? Yes. Does that mean you went through 13 whipping sessions? Uh, No. So they actually, they call it... um, What, lashings? The lashings. There's another word for it that was used in the Bible. So in the in the actual court document, um, oh man, I wish I wrote. I had it. I like took it out of the original, like in my notes, because I was like, no one's gonna know what that means. It's called like a. It's being flayed. No, it starts with an S. I thought, but when I read it, I was like, what the fuck does thir-? like? It, if one document said eleven, the other said thirteen. So we're just gonna go with thirteen because that's crazier. Um, but yeah, so thir- he was he was hit thirteen times. I don't know okay. with what. I don't know, like, I don't know what, what, um, yeah, so he's hit 13 times and then he was banned. He was kicked out of the county, which is, we love that. Wonderful. Um, so in Virginia, Pungo out of all the places in Virginia, uh, had the most accusations of witchcraft than any other area in Virginia. Um, and if you want to put up our D picture here, was it, was it flogging? No, it started with an S. I, if I find, oh, I was going to say if I find it, but I'm the one talking, so I can't do that. Um, but it is a specific word, and it's used, I guess, um, specifically in the Bible. I am not familiar with the Bible at all, so couldn't tell you when or where. But when I Googled the word, maybe? When I Googled the word, word earlier, literally the first two things that popped up were from the actual Bible itself. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, which makes sense. Um, so... Like Casey said earlier, um, witch ducking is when they would throw a witch into the water uh, using various different uh, methods. And if she, um, depending on the outcome, it determined if she was a witch or not. Um, So the trial by ducking has only been used in that we've known with documentation um, one time in Virginia. And that was to Grace Sherwood, uh, the witch of Pungo. It was believed that the water was considered pure and it would re- reject the witches, causing them to float, whereas the innocent would sink. But now with modern science, we know that humans just float in water. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of a flawed system there. Um, I, I'm just trying to think. Like, At some point, some of these dudes have gone swimming. At you some would point, think so. And they've just sort of treaded water so and it's, they floated it's a flawed like, system. women can't do that though tyler yeah not in that time and also so i read as well that a couple of um and a couple different accounts that they would uh, so actually this happens later so they would they would see if you float or not and then if you floated which you fucking would because you're an adult human um they would actually tie different things around your neck to see if you would still float and then you would end up drowning because you, they have tied things around you and you are so in the like, water. That happens and they're like, huh. Yeah, that happened a I lot I guess we times. were wrong. That happened. Anyways. There are so many accounts, especially in like other, not Virginia, um, where it's like, oh shit, she wasn't a witch. Damn, that's crazy. Anyway, so <laughs> it, it's really now. unfortunate. It really shows the like, the, I mean, it's a sign of the times, right? Um, and also just like an overall general hatred for women, which is unfortunate. Um, but so, like I said, uh, the one time in Virginia that trial by ducking was used was on Grace Sherwood. Um, and Grace Sherwood is the witch of Pungo. And she was born in 1660 to John and Susan White. Um, her father, John, was a carpenter and he was originally uh, or he was of Scottish descent and why her mother was of English descent. And they don't make any note of um, anything that she would do. So I would imagine she'd be a homemaker just based on the time frame. Um, when Grace was 20, Grace Sherwood was 20, she married a respectful farm landowner. His name was James. And they got married in the Lynn Haven Parish Church, which is now actually known as the Old Donation Church, which still exists. And you can actually go visit it. Um, that's important to note later, that she was married in that church. Um, and as a wedding gift, uh, Grace's father actually gave them 50 acres of land, which is like, shout out, it's a lot of land. Um, Grace and her husband eventually had three kids, John, James, and Richard. Um, a year later, after they got married, Grace's father died and then left them 145 acres of his farm as well. So now at this point, they have about 200 acres of land. Damn. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of land. Um, and even though they had all this land, the Sherwood family was still poor. They lived in an area um, that was mostly other small landowners um, or those with no land at all. Um, in addition to farming, because they had a lot of farmland, obviously, Grace grew a lot of her own herbs. She had an herb garden. Um, 
she was known for her gardening and she apparently used these to heal both people and animals. Um, so she was a, a very talented herbalist and she was also a midwife. Um, so and for those of you who don't know what a midwife is, that's just they help women uh, before and after birth to deliver babies and take care of said babies. Um, so again, you do have to know some sort of um, medical stuff in order to be a, bit, a midwife. And that's important <laughs> because women knowing things can be dangerous, apparently, in the, you know, witch, witch trials. Yeah, witch. Um, so, and on top of all of those magical things, uh, Grace Sherwood also wore pants. And boy, Whoa. boy. I think that's the most shocking thing. Breaking the rules. Rules. That fucking pissed off everybody. People saw her doing farm work. They're like, that is the devil's woman right there wearing fucking pants. Um, and every single account that I've read of her, it was noted. Like, she wore pants of that woman um so like i said that was super unusual for the time and also was herb growing it wasn't it wasn't used um in the way that it is now it wasn't as common obviously and again she was a woman um so these things were kind of just generally frowned upon um so i wrote this down i think it's important to note but i don't know the accuracy of it um <laughs> so this one source says that the combination of her really weird clothing, her job, and um, her good looks was attracted uh, attracted men, but then upset their wives. However, dot com, um, there are no pictures and or drawings or any physical description of her whatsoever. So I don't know how accurate this is, but I just wanted to put it in. Um, because I don't know, that seems like the silliest thing ever on the face of the planet. But you know, we love a good woman wearing pants working on the farm. It's my entire life summed up, right? Um, I do think it's interesting though. There's, there's no like, no one knows what she looks like. Does this mean that that Gray Sherwood is the first, uh, is the OG hex girl? We, I would love to see it. Let's make. It, I'll be her Grace Sherwood for Halloween, and be as a hex girl. <laughs> um, so, uh, though that is important to know, all that to say that Sherwood's neighbors may have actually been jealous of her because one, they she had hella land, um, so that was that's you know money you have money you have all that stuff to do th uh, from her, and if she was actually an attractive woman and men were attracted to her and their wives were upset, um, that could be another cause uh, to be fucking mad at her. You know, you got all this land and my husband wants you. It's not going well. Um, and yeah, so the witchcraft tales could have been conjured up from this effort uh, to remove the land from her. Because uh, back in the day, you could just fucking kill people for their land. and be like, shit, it's my land now. Uh, so that is a, a hypothesis that some historians have come up with. Um, and over her lifetime, Grace Sherwood was hit with over a dozen lawsuits a dozen of them, um, in which she had to defend herself. And m m a couple of them were from witchcraft, um, or, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. Maybe yeah. I, maybe I missed this. Uh, okay. Her husband is still alive at this point. Yes, correct? he is. He is still alive. So uh, I'm just trying to understand, like you're, you're in the 1600s. Mm -hmm. It's very much like strictly male dominated society. Yeah. Why are they suing her and not her husband, who I'm assuming would legally be be her, so they do. Okay, <laughs> um, they All do. Right. Actually, uh, so the very first court case against Grace um, was in 1916. Wow, 1697, um, and that was when Mr. Richard Chaps alleged that she had cast a spell on his bull causing it to die um so the court actually couldn't come to conclusion at all casey really likes my toad here yeah i, I just I, I needed something to fidget with oh you're gonna call me out for fidgeting and then uh yeah okay uh, i uh, no, nope. uh, I'm gonna okay. keep my mouth shut. Um, so yeah, Richard Capps had uh, attempted to sue the Sherwoods, both of them, um, husband and wife, um, for casting a spell on his bull, and the bull had ended up dying. Um, the court couldn't could not come to a conclusion on whether or not they thought that Grace had did this or not. Um, this happens a lot. You'll see the, a lot of times court, like I said earlier, the court's just kind of like, Shh, I don't fucking know. You'll figure that shit out yourself. Uh, so that's what happened here. The court could not come to a conclusion, and um, the Sherwoods in return filed defamation against the caps um and ended up getting dropped though and they settled it out of court uh for some money so the next year just fucking one year later uh grace was accused by her neighbor john gisburn of enchanting his pigs and ruining his cotton crop um so same thing no court action followed because they decided to dispute this outside of court uh so we have a bull we have a cr uh, crop cotton crop and we have pigs um however this next one, this next one is my favorite. Uh, Miss Elizabeth Barnes 
same exact year as the pig enchanting and cotton crop for the record, uh, Elizabeth Barnes alleged that Grace Sherwood had turned into a black cat, had entered Barnes' home, jumped over her bed, started scratching at her as a cat, and then left through the keyhole of the door. Yeah. Yeah, as you do. Normal. Guilty. Um, it sounds like she was on a bad trip, but instead she decided to blame Grace uh, for becoming a black cat and fucking exiting through the keyhole. Um, again, the allegation, the court was like, we don't know. We don't know if that's possible or not. Uh, so the case became unresolved. And again, another defamation action um, was placed, but they decided to scuttle, settle it outside of court once again for money. Uh, for each of these failed defamation suits, it's important to note that Sherwood and her husband both had to pay for court-related costs. So not only um, are they being sued for fucking turning into black cats and running through the night like some thieves, um, now they're paying them to be like, hello, please, please stop suing me. Um, so now... Wait, hold on, hold on. Uh-huh. I thought this was the... I thought that they were suing their accuser. So they to did. To be like, okay. Yeah, so they sue. So they were getting sued for turning into black cats. And yes, fucking and then they turn around and be like, you're lying about yep. me. And then they would say. But they say, still have to pay money? Um, they do have to pay court costs in order to be in the court. Just like we have to pay, you know, if you pay a lawyer, even if you were to sue. They need to, they need to get one of those uh, those TV lawyers. They <laughs> Call 8100, you know, settle now. against Hurt line. Black call cat. Beep, boop, beep, boop, bop, bop, bop. <laughs> right now. Right now. Um, Joel the that, Hammer Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was Lowell. Lowell. Well, I think th- I think it's a son and a dad. Lowell, the Hammer Lowell. Stanley. Lowell and Joel. They're throwing the hammer down. Yeah, where was Lowell the Hammer Stanley during this time? Damn. Yeah. Get, get out of there. Together. Um, so now, just a couple years later, it's 1701 now, and her husband has passed away. Um, he left Grace all of the property because he's a man of, of good property you know and uh grace actually never remarried which made people very suspicious of her because for some reason because god forbid a woman do anything ever <sighs> that, so she was on this it. property all alone uh she had her sons with her but all alone by herself maintaining the property and they were like that's so suspicious that she would not remarry to but get a man really, to take care of the land I, mm, so her name this is upsets me so fucking much pitchforks they're getting ready so many there are so many accounts in history of like if a woman remarries, then like she's uh, uh-huh. she's not chased anymore. Uh huh. And it's like, just fuck me. This is so upset. Yep. It only <laughs> gets worse. Like, be dumb in one way. Pick a struggle. <laughs> fuck. That's why I love I love the history of things because people resettle in places and settle elsewhere, and then they just become dumb in eight hundred different ways. And it's so exciting to see the level of dumb that we can bring to the case. So, um, yeah. So then in 1705, just a few years after her husband died um, and they thought she was suspicious for, you know, not remarrying, um, she got into a fucking fist fight. I don't know if it's a fist fight or not, but she got into a physical altercation. I want to believe it's a fist fight. With her neighbor, Elizabeth Hill. And Grace sued Hill and her husband because, you know, I have to sue the husband too, for assault and battery. And she actually won this case. Hell yeah. Um, which is awesome. So we can prove that Elizabeth Hill was trying to tussle. Um, and she was awarded one pound sterling. And how much money do you guys think that's worth for after getting your ass beat by your neighbors? Pound sterling of silver? I'm assuming mm-hmm. it's silver still. Uh, yeah. 0. 0.003 cents. Okay. Okay. Going all I'm the way guess under. It, I'm going to guess a few thousand dollars. A few thousand dollars? Okay. So after getting her ass beat by her neighbor, Elizabeth Six Hill, dollars. She was a Grace, Grace Sherwood was awarded $1.37. As payment for getting her ass beat, but this is a dollar and thirty-seven cents in today's money. Oh, it's today's money. Yo. Uh huh. Um. So. For <laughs> I this makes. When I was when I was like trying to convert because they they go for a couple different measurements in the documents they say one pound sterling and then also twenty shillings, and twenty shillings, it, or no one pound sterling is okay. They're equal. They're the same. So, t- yeah, okay. 120th. Okay. Is it, it shilling the word you were trying to think of before? No. Okay. That is a payment method. Or, a, 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 yes. But, sh- no. <laughs> Are shillings like coins? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, it was, they're going between 20 shillings, which is equal to one pound sterling, which in today's modern money is $1.37. Oh, I, th- <sighs> uh huh. I thought this was like a pound of silver. Mm mm. One pound sterling. Sterling. It's a different measurement. I know. It's very... The measurements... Yeah, what the fuck, England? Make it make sense. 
So then, after Grace got her ass beat and then got paid her one dollar and thirty-seven cents, uh, the same couple, the Hills, accused Grace Sherwood of witchcraft, and they believed that she had bewitched Elizabeth and caused her to miscarry. Um, so a year later, well, a couple months later, in early 1706, Princess Anne County just justices tried to get two juries together, both made up of um, women, and hopefully to to give her some better chances there to search grace to prove that she was a witch um the princess and county justices wanted the first party to search her home uh for proof of different um like wood carvings or waxen carvings of people to prove that she was a witch the second was ordered to look for quote demon suckling teats by examining her naked body in both instances, local residents fucking refused. They were like, we're not doing that. We're not comfortable with that. Uh, so the justices, they're like, okay, fine. And they dropped the idea. Um, but then they found a jury that was willing to examine her body for witch marks, like we talked about earlier. Um, and it's important to note that the head of this jury was Elizabeth Barnes, who had previously accused witch, um, Grace of witchcraft. So I would argue that was a slightly biased jury. And after um, searching her naked body for witch marks, they discovered, quote, marks, two marks, not like theirs or not like the marks of other women. Um, so truly, that could be anything under the planet. It could be uh, you have a mole on your fucking neck. That could be, um, and it's important to note, she was a gardener. So maybe she had some scars from gardening. It could have been any of those things. Um, so after that, neither the... Uh, colonial authorities in Williamsburg nor the local court in Princess Anne were willing to declare Grace Sherwood a witch. Um, they're like, we don't have enough evidence of this. So kind of them. Um, but they instructed the local court to investigate further uh, because they were still unsure but wanted to make sure that there was a fair trial. Fair trial. Uh, consequently, the sheriff of the Princess Anne County took Sherwood into custody and she was eventually taken inside the Linhaven Parish Church, which she was previously mur uh, not murdered in, married in. Wow. Uh, the same church she was married in. And she, they slapped her on a stool and they told her that she needed to beg for forgiveness because she was a witch. Um, she refused and she said, quote, I be not a witch, I be a healer. I don't know if she had that accent, but I think that's fun. Um, so that is <laughs> what she's quoted was saying. And after that, the justices ordered a trial by ducking to take place since she refused to admit that she was a witch. So originally this was planned on July 5th, 1706, but they were so kind. They were so kind people. And they said, oh, it's going to rain that day. We don't want you to be ducked on a day that's going to rain. Yeah. So they everybody else has to get uh, wet. Everyone else. Yeah. We, we just want to enjoy you getting fucking wet. Not you all like everyone else get wet. So they rescheduled her ducking five days later when the weather was supposed to be a uh, holdout for her on July 10th, 1706. So at about 10 a.m. on July 10th, 1706, Sherwood was taken down a dirt road to the mouth of the Linhaven River, which is now known as Witch Duck Road, uh, to a plantation at the very mouth of the Linhaven River. Uh, her exact ducking site is actually on North Witch Duck Road on Witch Duck Point in Virginia Beach, um, looking north if you're looking north on the street. Uh, so news had spread, and the event attracted people all over from town uh, who wanted to watch this poor woman get ducked. And some accounts um, say that they heard people say, quote, duck the witch, duck the witch. She deserved to be ducked. Um, so I'm sorry. All I can think about is trying to write like fuck in my phone and then autocorrecting to duck. To duck. <laughs> so, <laughs> duck. duck. <laughs> this was all just one misunderstanding. <laughs> that's, yeah, that was, that's the 1600s version. Of is, yeah, exactly. Uh, be gone, thy witch. Duck the witch. Um, so according to law, like you said earlier, Casey, if Sherwood floated, she'd be deemed guilty of witchcraft. So if she did not, if she did not float, she would be innocent. And I'm not sure... If you guys know how humans work and most bodies of water, um, but they float. So, uh, but the court, again, being so nice and amazing as the Virginia court is, um, the court said that they did not want her to drown regardless of the outcome. So even if she were to be stuck underwater for a long time, they wanted them to be, uh, to pull her up to quote, preserve her life. Um, which how kind of them. So kind of them. Um, so, after that, they after they made that call, um, five women from the same church that she was married at uh, forced Grace to strip down uh, completely naked and examine her body to make sure she didn't have any tools on her or any weapons or anything like that. And then they covered her body, um, her head with a sack. While still naked, uh, they tied her hands to her feet and they were um, 
and then they dragged her onto a boat and then uh, her and a bunch of other church members they rode 200 yards out into the river and this poor woman is again naked uh hands tied behind their back and a head co- uh head is covered and uh, because um why was I going? Oh, I just lost my train of thought. Wonderful. So then, <laughs> so then they rode out about 200 feet into the river, um, and then she was pushed off the boat. And because of science, uh, she quickly floated to the surface. Unsatisfied with this, though, the sheriff tied a 13-pound Bible around her neck. Um, this then caused her to sink because it's a 13-pound wet Bible that they had then tied to her neck. Um, Yep, Casey's face. Casey's face. Uh, this Sounds obviously. Like, what is it made out of? A, a Bible. Like, how is it thirteen pounds? It's a thick it's ass big. Bible. They don't have that. There's no like a. Uh, it's not like a printing press at this. Well, the yeah. Problem, the, I don't. When did the fucking printing press? I'm I feel not like a thirteen doctor. pound book is like. No, like one good Stephen King thick. pound book is pretty hefty. But also, you have to think about back in the day. There was no like. I'm sure the font was fucking. 800 comic sans and not, and not, and not like, six words per page yeah exactly um, i'm sure it wasn't our quick little compressed bibles you find in like hotels and stuff like that and also it was wet so that might have also contributed to the yeah. weight as well um so this obviously caused her to sink um but when she's underwater she managed to untie herself because she's a badass bitch and then return to the surface or because she's a witch. she's a fucking witch i was gonna say so this actually convinced many of the spectators that she was a witch because she's she went back up to the top Yo, you can untie knots which which you have phalanges that work ridiculous um so that concludes the trial trial's technically over um what happened to sherwood after the ducking is unclear because the court records were lost uh so we do know that they decided um we don't know they said we don't know if she's a witch or not that's crazy um, wait so after all that it's uh-huh. still inconclusive yep so they officially. so they ruled it um they ruled it guilty technically but they were up in arms about it some people were like she's not a witch other people were like she is a witch um so that's again another example of them being like oh, i don't know that's crazy um but a lot of them since they decided she did float she was still found guilty but they still weren't sure if she was a witch or not it makes perfect sense um so then she served an unknown amount of jail time because we lost the files. Uh, there are some records that say it was up to seven years that she served for being a witch. Reasonable. Um, yeah, up to seven years. Uh, so after she, and it's also important to note that she was jailed right next to the church that she got married in. So this poor woman has gone this church so many horrible times um, for <laughs> crazy things. So after she um, left jail, after that up to seven years, she lived the remainder of her life quietly until her death in 1740, where uh, she was about 80 years old. And when she died, she left five shillings each to her sons, James and Richard, and then everything else she left to her oldest, um, John. Grace now lies in an unmarked grave in a field near the intersection of Punga Fair Road and Princess Anne Road in Virginia Beach. Um, and if you want to pull up picture E for me, she does have a memorial stone, so she, her grave itself is unmarked, but this is a memorial stone at the church that she was married, jailed at, and, you know, done all those horrible things at, because, like I said, that church still exists. Um, so it's actually really cool. Uh, you can see a little bit over here, uh, but they actually have an herb, gra- uh, an herb garden growing around her memorial stone, and it's all labeled with different herbs like oregano and basil and things like that in order to honor her since back in the day that was frowned upon. Um, So that is quite nice. Uh, But I think it's funny to mention that after she died, uh, stories started spreading around town uh, that after her death, her spirit was transformed into black cats uh, and (laughs) that were circulating in the neighborhood. So different local residents started killing every single stray cat they could possibly find in the neighborhood. And historians believe that this exact reason that these people were killing all these cats um actually caused a widespread infestation of rats and mice that was recorded historically in the princess Anne county uh in 1743 so they think (laughs) that literally her death caused this rat and mice infestation because people were killing off cats so she uh still coming back and haunting all the people for fucking ruining her life 
Um, and her home in Muddy Creek actually stood for over 200 years. Um, in 2002, a bunch of vandals actually burned it, so burned it to the ground. So really, there were just two chimneys left, um, which is unfortunate. So they ended up deciding to bulldoze it in November of 2012. And now all that remains are a few bricks and a part of the foundation, which is overgrown. Um, the property is now actually part of the federal government land and is on Back Bay National Wildlife Refuge, um, which is a local wildlife refuge. You guys should go hiking there. It's fine. Um, but, which is cool, but, you know, she still has a disservice of slander of being a witch on her name. So um, Governor Tim Kaine actually pardoned her <laughs> 300 years hey. after her trial. Yeah, look, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate um, that this is where my tax money went to. Yep, Governor, he pardoned her. Uh, so 300 years on the date. Now free all my niggas in there for we in in jail for weed charges. Yes, please do that. If you have a weed charge, you don't you don't need to be in jail. But so they pardoned um, her. Years years to the date. <laughs> and Tim Kaine, <laughs> Tim Kaine stated, "Quote: With 300 years of hindsight, we all can certainly agree that trial by water is an injustice. We can also celebrate the fact that women's equality is constitutionally protected today." Mm -hmm. And women have the freedom to pursue their hopes and dreams. Uh, so you can now actually President visit Grace down. Sherwood statue on the corner of Independence Boulevard in North Witch Duck. And, thing? Uh, so that's Grace Sherwood, which again, we don't have any accurate oh. representations of. So she's Cold. holding a bunch of herbs. And there's a raccoon buyer because okay. she liked animals. I was asking about the raccoon. Yeah. Did you think? Because no, like, like, without without anyway. context, what just happened was what's that thing? Well, that's Grace <laughs> Sherwood. <laughs> that's what just happened. And I wasn't saying I, like that uh, thing being the woman I, in the statue. <laughs> I, I was that. already explaining because it looks like a bear. It does, and then it has a weird tail. It does kind of look tiny. Bears. Raccoons are trash bears. That they are. So she, since you know her love of all things nature, um, she was a, you know a naturalist, and she was also an herbalist. So she is having. She has a bundle of herbs um, and other different plants, and a little raccoon is hanging out with her. Um, this is also right outside of my doctor's office. <laughs> well, where is that? Um, it's on the corner. That's I guess a, not that's to a put Walgreens building right there. Oh, I don't give a fuck. Okay. Um, doctor's office. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, so it's on the corner of Independence Boulevard and North Witch Duck Road. Um, yeah. So there's a Centera Hospital right here, and literally that's the parking lot for my for the doctor's office. Oh. And then this is Grace Sherwood statue. Oh. Um, and in the links that I'll post for this thing, there's actually a bunch of different other like memorials on this road for Grace Sherwood. Um, so that's just one of the many. But there's a bunch of different plaques and things like that, um, and people go visit them all the time. Actually, the last time I went to the doctor, someone left roses or like some plant, some flowers or whatever at her statue, which I thought was really cool. So I have a so. You said earlier that her actual burial site is like an unmarked mm -hmm. like an spot. Unmarked grave, yeah. Do people do that like leave like I don't flowers there? Like, is, it, is that like frowned upon for people to do? I don't like, think so. I doubt it's frowned upon. Um, if it's unmarked, I'm sure that they know where it's at. Um, but I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'm sure they do. Sorry, I have the hiccups now, uh, but I'm sure they do. People leave uh, like whenever I leave the doctors, I see people like there's just flowers on everything um, that has her name on it. So, you know, so it's cool. Grace, uh, Grace Sherwood is the patron saint of every uh, spooky bitch and scene girl. Yep. Uh, she walks so we can run. <laughs> yep. And it's unfortunate, too, because in reality, like she just liked to garden <laughs> like she liked to garden. And that I mean, that's it. Like she was just slightly more independent. Those are witch things. There's a they long fucked things. up history of women just being like, yo, I'm interested in things. I'm in, I like this thing. <laughs> like, I'm interested in things. And, and the then, patriarchy said, the fuck you are. No, you're not. Like, yo, you are. That's wild. Insane. I think my favorite part was the um, like reading about this was the woman that accused her of becoming a cat and sliding in through her peephole at night. I was like, wow, that's that's some good stuff. Yeah, that, that extra it extra sucks because that's like a woman not supporting another woman. Oh yeah, lots and of like that. And like the times were clearly that's like what was needed because oh. men weren't gonna fucking do anything. Yeah, no, no, they um, yeah, no, there not a lot of support going on for other women there, or you know anybody. <laughs> but yeah, so that is the story of Grace Sherwood. She is now pardoned, so she is legally no longer a witch. We love that. Um, but yeah, she has lots of different roads named after her. Uh, so Sherwood Road actually interjects with Witch Duck Road. Um, so those are all named after her, which is very cool. Pretty important part of Virginia Beach history, Virginia Beach Pungo history. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, uh, that was my first time hearing about any of that. It's a good time. I don't. <laughs> is that, was any of that taught in, in school? No. No, I, I doubt okay. it. I know Salem witch trials were taught a little bit. I'm not, I can't remember. Yeah, no, I don't think any of that was taught. I mean, it's, a, it's, I don't want to say in, I mean, in this grand scheme of things, it's probably just a blip in, in the history of that you need to learn. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty important, especially for like, I mean, that was considered the, one of the biggest witchcraft trials in Virginia. I think it's pretty important, especially, I think it's especially interesting comparing like the mass hysteria that was Salem witch trials, like up in Massachusetts, um, compared to how Virginia handled it. And like I said, Virginia didn't particularly like to handle witchcraft trials. Um, but then Massachusetts was just kind of like, Let's you're on the board. Like, <laughs> like, all right, so you're a witch. Okay, cool. So there's this thing I'm about to tell you to, we're going to light it on fire. Yeah. And look, if you survive, crazy. If you don't survive, crazy. Bad. <laughs> like, if you oh, survive, you're a witch. We're going to kill you some other way. Yeah. It's especially sad too. Like the, um, our gentleman, our, <laughs> our lovely short King, um, that wrote an entire book about all the women that he's like captured and murdered and shit like that for being witches. When in reality, they just have birthmarks or like had slight def like just deformities. It's very unfortunate. It's the reality of it. Um, but yeah, it's so much of our history as uh, Virginia, obviously in the entire United States is just very, very sad. I don't know. I, if this isn't, well, I mean, Grace Sherwood's story and, you know, plenty of other stories that we don't know about. Yeah. Um, just in general of Virginia history. Um, I don't know what kind of push, I don't know how you like who you petition to add that to a school curriculum. Right. Like, I don't really know who you go to, but like, I know in Texas, there's an entire like class or like section of your history class called cool. Texas, like Texas history. That makes sense. And I know, I wish we, I, yeah, I wish we did have more things like that. And I know we, um, in the SEM 511, it's pushed quite heavily, like the, the Jonestown, uh, why do I keep saying Jonestown instead of Jamestown? <laughs> Jamestown. Jonestown. I mean, they're um, both pretty spooky. Also, completely tragic <laughs> murders and suicides. That's not fun either. I mean, wasn't isn't that the the place where like everyone just sort of disappeared? No, no. Uh, Jonestown. We'll save that for another episode. Jonestown um, was no, not uh, Jonestown. I mean Jamestown. Jamestown. No, that's Roanoke Colonies. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is different yeah there's lots of lots of things no jamestown colony is where um colonizers settled base in virginia like you know williamsburg yeah yeah uh they're out there churning butter and stuff and you can go visit uh, so yeah that's a huge part of virginia curriculum i'm pretty sure that's like all fourth and fifth graders talk about for history is is jamestown which is i mean it's important but it's also shown in the wrong light it's not like they're like, wow, look how happy they were to settle here. And everyone wanted to welcome them. Right. When in reality, it was like, we're raping and pillaging. Please move out of the way. Like, <laughs> there is, it's not accurate. Also, let it be known that, like, uh, so you went back to, like, the, like, a lot of this is based out of, like, religion. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. like, uh, the fear that comes out of just religion yeah. a lot of the time. Um, these people were Puritans. Yes. And these these were the people that were too hardcore Christian for the Catholic fucking yes, church. Yes, that's very <laughs> like, important to know. <laughs> like, these guys were too weird for the Pope. Yeah. And he was like, all right, <laughs> the look, The Pope dog. said, no, get the fuck out. Like, they were like, all right, look, dog, there's there's some spy over there. Yeah. Go the fuck over that's, there. <laughs> that is very important to note. Yeah, the, the Puritan religion um, was much, it, it was very extreme, which makes sense as to why they are obsessed with double marking and things like that if that's the extreme that they follow mm -hmm. when i read that like the devil mark it was very interesting i was like wow what if they what if one of the birthmarks would literally just look like this <laughs> yeah and it made a noise every time you looked at yeah, it yeah exactly. okay i was gonna say so actually one of the ways that they proved if you were a witch or not with these with these witch marks um was if you couldn't feel it so like if i if you were to take it they would take a hot needle and they would poke it and you couldn't feel it or if it didn't bleed they'd be like you're a witch um and then they would they would use that as evidence in court against you so i don't know how that works but that was one of the there again there's like a whole document they had like photos or drawings not photos of um the tools that they would use on your witch marks and things like that like i just 
can you imagine like having i don't know you have like a callus and it's obviously not gonna bleed yeah <laughs> and they're like you're a fucking witch i'd be like well okay i just play guitar but that's fine too <laughs> like was there anything like that for for um i guess w- would that be a warlock for, y- for men yeah oh it's the same yeah which isn't which isn't warlocks to the uh they're just gendered okay yeah Warlocks are, are male witches and witches are male warlocks. Or fuck, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yep, yeah, yeah. yep, that's fine. <laughs> just just to be let it known, it's 11.30 p.m. at night. So. It's 11.30? <laughs> it's 11.33. I have to be up in like five hours, so. But yeah, so that is the story. That's the real. Sp- uh, that's the real to, horror, that's ladies the real and gentlemen, is, is capitalism <laughs> making me have to wake up and cry <laughs> every morning. Um but at least I'm not being tried as a witch like Grace Sherwood was. Um, so, yeah, that's a brief, very, very brief history of um, Virginia witchcraft and Grace Sherwood, who is probably one of the most important witches um, in her not story. Not witches. Excuse you're right. me. She, you're right. She's a pardoned. She's pardoned no witch. No longer a witch. As she said, I not be a witch, I be a healer. Um, so, yeah, that uh, story of Grace Sherwood. And, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hate that that oh yeah my lava lamp still it, it hasn't off. It, it's been on for a minute like is it hot it, i mean i hope so yeah no it's fucking hot man you went you went in on that didn't you i thought you were gonna be like you I, just said nah yeah i'm a witch it's fine yeah it doesn't burn yeah that's uh super ups- upsetting that i was hoping it was gonna <laughs> oh what no it's just the oh it's not hot uh, that means i'm a witch <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lamp, it's fine. That reminded me of a of a of a brief story that has nothing to do with anything we talked about. <laughs> uh, when, when I was, when I, when I'm not, we're, we're, it's not ending yet. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, if you're st- still here, damn, um, <laughs> you, you you're you're in for a really good treat with this story. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I think it was a birthday party, um, and I, uh, like it was before the party and like my mom was cooking or whatever. Uh, and I walked up to the stove and went, not hot, not hot, not hot, hot, hot. <laughs> and I burned the ever living shit. Out. Like it was blistered and everything. Yeah, I man. Burnt my hand. And for the whole party, uh, I had to keep my hand in a bowl of water <laughs> and we played twister. <laughs> And I kept having to get up and run to the bathroom to run my hand under water. Cause I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I, I, I think that happened. It definitely you think that happened. It, I, I have like weird, a weird, like, like it feels like a dream. Memory uh, okay, of yeah. That. Yeah. But that's, nice. that, that was really it. You got Just, that witch duck. I, well, so I'm not a witch cause I felt I, I got burned. That's true. Yeah. I'm not a warlock. But yeah. Thanks, warlock. thanks guys for tuning in to the low Bat podcast, uh, where we talked about Grace <laughs> Sherwood and a brief history of Virginia's, uh, witches. Is that what we're going out on? Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. Different song. The last two minutes. Also, our mics are still alive. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Uh, The copyright. (laughs) (laughs) The the, the lights are different different colors. I realized like halfway through that that one's more blue and this one's more yellow. I am so tired. I don't know how that happened. Oh, you're... uh, Babe!